Mm. Are we allowed to record it, Margaret? Yes, I think you are. Uh, if, if I press record, they say you have to give permission. Uh, so the talk will be recorded by okay. us. And uh, we'll be happy to share the recording with you. Okay. And it will also be live streamed on YouTube and it will be available later on YouTube as a recording. Okay. Good. Good, great. <laughs> Okay, so uh, it's four o'clock, so I think we can get started. Uh, we have a healthy audience already and I'm sure people will join in and also join on YouTube where we are streaming this talk live. So I'm Asin Paranspe. It's a real pleasure for me to welcome back uh, Professor Jayant Narlikar for this very special seminar. Uh, we have this uh, Tuesday slot reserved for Ayuka Academics, and uh, it's really excellent that uh, Jayant is going to speak to us today. Uh, I'm sure all of you will agree with me that as students, we have been uh, inspired over the years by uh, Jayant's uh, story and his uh, trajectory in the field of cosmology and physics. Uh, and today we are looking very much forward to this very special talk on Cambridge, my alma mater, uh, which he has kindly uh, agreed to give us. So Jayant, please uh, go ahead. The way we will do it is uh, you can give your talk and we will have maybe, if you like, a few questions at the end from the audience uh, and uh, the talk will be recorded and also available on YouTube. So Jayant, please go ahead. I am going to talk about a remarkable institution, the University of Cambridge, which a few years ago celebrated its 800th anniversary. Imagine we normally think of celebrating centenary at the most, but this was 800 years. So this a remarkable institution it has been going for more than 800 years and what has it achieved, what are happening, what are the important developments here, we will have a look at it briefly. Now you see here the tie of Cambridge University and there are numbers written 800 on the card to show that it is 800 years when the tie was brought out to celebrate. So this, <coughs> this is the, the starting point and I want to say that I was fortunate enough to be a student at Cambridge followed by graduate students First undergraduate, then graduate student, then fellow, research fellow, and then teaching in the Cambridge University Institute of Theoretical Astronomy. So, altogether 15 years I spent in Cambridge, and I want to really share with you some of, some of my experiences. So let us start with a brief history. The university was founded in 1209 when scholars in Oxford fled the city to avoid persecution. 
what was happening was that there was controversy going on between <coughs> between the Archbishop of Kent, you no, know, between the King of England and the Pope. It is concerned the Archbishop of Canterbury to, to start with. The question was who was the appointing authority for Archbishop of Canterbury? Was it the King or the Pope? Now there are people who believe in one uh, minority effect and majority were outside and they were more in favor of the king. And so those who were in favor of the king, they became very violent. And there was a minority of scholars in Cambridge, sorry, scholars in Oxford, who were su suffering from this controversy. Now imagine when we have a controversy like the one I described just now, what do you do? You have arguments, debates and so on. In the year 1209, the issue was settled by killing the opponents. So the result was the minority felt very unsafe and they flew from there to other parts of England. And some of them settled in Cambridge. They found the view was pretty good. The university was quiet, there was no controversy, and they founded a university there. That is how English came about. <coughs> now, Henry III gave charter in 1231 to the scholars of Cambridge, which exempted them from taxes. Why? In 1233, Pope Gregory IX gave its graduates the right to teach anywhere and everywhere. So you see, the controversy seems to have been resolved and the new university got backing both from the king and the pope. So what happened was people started build, begin building colleges around the Central River Camp in Cambridge. The first college was Peter House in 1284. Later, Royal Foundations were King's College, which you see in the picture. This was in 1440. <coughs> then, St. John's College, which was 1511. And then the Trinity College, which was 1546. This is King's College. Uh, sorry, Trinity College. And in this main college, Trinity, there was there was to be later a brilliant scholar called Isaac Newton, who lived in this part of the college. Now the Cambridge system is what I described two dimensions. A typical Cambridge dawn, that is typical Cambridge work, research worker, teacher, is a member of some university department and member of a college. The advantage is scholars from different disciplines can meet and exchange ideas. For example, in Kings, this type of people, E.M. Foster, on the left, then Philip Hall, mathematician, and Edmund Leach, social scientist, on the right. Now, these are different subjects. They would not normally be. 
but being a member of the same college, they meet every day for a dinner and other conversation. So this two years teaching was that there were lectures in the university and supervisions in college. Additionally, the pupil looks after any personal problem and gives guidance like a senior family member. So this was the advantage of students who went, went to study in Cambridge. Now what was college life like? What does living in college mean? First thing is, people say that which college you come from, you think that you have to answer where you learned your lessons. The answer is no. The answer is where did you live at the, at the hostel? So, in the old time, there is a story about Peter House College that people wanted to build. They got some funds to build a new block of building to house more students. So the fellows were discussing how to build and how much to build. So some of the younger fellows said that we need to have in this uh, new building some, call, some uh, what you call bathroom. Because in the old building there were no bathroom. So this uh, old student said why do the students need bathroom? They will come here only for one one term at a time, it is about 60 days. They don't need a bath in the, those 60 days. So why are you worried? And they didn't build any bath. Then there were high, high table and sacred lawn. High table is the dinner table for senior members of the college. And sacred lawns are the lawns that you saw in the, in the picture a little while ago, where the, only the senior members of that particular college can walk. Now here is the example. When I was a student, I was a, at Fitzwilliam House, it is on the left hand side. That same house now got a lot of land and money, so they have built a new version which you see on the right. And you see it in lawns also. <coughs> Excuse me. And there were fellows and senior members who had different dresses called academic dresses or gowns at different upon different occasions. <coughs> now, when I was a student, there was a rule that students who, who are Moving around in the city of Cambridge in the evening after dusk, they must wear a gown. Now, in case they did, did not wear a gown, they will be fine. And this work was done by this, what you see here, the, the proctor is in the middle and there are two assistants. What happened was, so when the proctor saw this, a possible student who was without a gown after dusk, he would call him, come here please. Now the student had a choice to go and say hello to the doctor, to the proctor, or he could run away. So if he ran away, the proctor couldn't run as fast as that young man. So these two people, where is assistant, they would run for him, they will go and catch hold of that man, that boy, 
bring in and that the block for the wood pine so these two <coughs> these two on the other side are called bulldog these are the assistants of the prop then there was the tripos examination these are the main examinations of king now what were they like the oldest of all was mathematical tripos the person who took first in the whole examination was called senior wrangler likewise they also announced who was the lowest in the rank and that was called wooden spoon you see here on the right a wooden spoon which was given to him as a reward for scoring the lowest passing mark he must pass but not but with the lowest score on the left hand side you see under there the vice chancellor is sitting and giving is the doctorate as or the what we call the degree uh, to the scholar and the first scholar to get the degree was always the senior wrangler now the being a senior wrangler was a very important distinction and he got a lot of what you call perks for his later study the oldest the first senior wrangler from india was was rp paranste who was <coughs> who was at st john's college he, he stood first along with another fellow student they shared the first prize and they were both senior wranglers so in the tripos examination the result is read out at stroke of Nine in the morning, from the balcony of the Senate House, and the what happened is at the end of reading the list of students who were passed and in what class they passed, what were their wranglership. Just as senior wrangler, the next one would be called second wrangler, then third wrangler. They were all announced. like this and then afterwards the examiner would throw away copies of that result sheet from the top and students would scramble to collect it now this this still happens i believe in cambridge only they don't have senior wranglers anymore because they had kept ranking secret in the sense that it is not announced and officially people sometimes know who are senior ranking but it's not officially recognized so <clears throat> then i should mention that in early stage stage in about 1948 women were not allowed degrees by king they now this was moved and the new statute was made which enabled them to have the what is called this degree of chamber but and you can see the unfairness that in the mathematical tripos there was one year once the top person was not a girl not a boy but a girl but she was not called senior wrangler she was not a rank and the ranking was first rank was given to the student who was second rank 
So this was unfair and finally people began to rectify and eventually the colleges became mixed co-education. This is what I was telling. <coughs> In 1972, King's was the first college to open the doors to women fellows and later to women undergraduate. There were jokes on women students on the in the old days. There is one joke which was being told when I was a student. It was like this that it was believed that the women students in Cambridge who were very bright, no doubt, because they came to Cambridge, they were, however, regarded as not very into feminine. People thought that they were more like very strict, what we call headmaster retired lady. So, uh, so there was once a class going on with women and men attending it, and this. The professor was describing a particular island in his in geography, which was in the Atlantic. And he said that in this you cannot ever you cannot go unless there is a boat going or coming. Now he said that there are very few women compared to men. So women are in great demand for marriage and so on. And he then made a joke saying that even Cambridge students, women students, will find advance here. So when he said that, the women students got very annoyed for this kind of poor joke. And they will stay a walk out. So as they walked out, the professor shouted, Oh, wait, wait, the boat is not leaving yet. Now, in sports, the main rival is the other place, that is Oxford. Cambridge blue is light blue, half and full. Both, some sports have half blue, some sports have full blue. And those who get full blue uh, usually become member of a prestigious club called the Fox Club, which is shown here. In my period here at Cambridge, one Sri Lankan student, Rajendram, was a member of the boxing team against the Oxford and he got a boxing blue. He did how he was able to take me and get some other friends for lunch at this thing. So another important race is Boat race. You see the river, how curved it is, and on this curved river, uh, you start from Putney on London, London suburb, and go up to Mort Lake. The whole idea is between Oxford and Cambridge, which boat manages to do it first. <coughs> Yeah. 
that another important game in rugby, rugby football, which causes a great deal of enthusiasm, and of course cricket. I should mention that in the old days, every visiting cricket team from abroad used to go and they play at, at Oxford and Cambridge. I don't know what happened these days now, but there used to be a match between Oxford and a match between Cambridge and their visiting team. The main sport, uh, oh by the way, I should also tell you that one of the regular viewers of these cricket matches was the astronomer Eddington. He used to come and watch it. And while watching, watching, waiting, he, he formulated a mathematical logic problem involving cricket. And it is a worthwhile exercise if you want to try under special circumstances you are given the all the details of when, who got out, etc. And then you are asked to say what happened to each ball of the match. And you can work it out. And the river which I mentioned that the Cam River has these flat boats which are called punts. The river is not really deep. So what you do is you have these big sticks which has used to push the boat along and you stand like this, and if you lose your balance, you had it, you will fall in the river. Then they had races between colleges, where one college is, one college bumps, the next college, they are all in a line. That is a very interesting exercise. I also should mention that there is an orchard near Cambridge which was frequented by the poet Rupert Group. And it, you can go and have real afternoon tea uh, at Manchester as part of your exercise for walking two to three miles from the center of Cambridge. Then the students played various pranks while they were at Cambridge. They were not always studying. They had a dog called Guy Fox Day. Guy Fox was a revolutionary who threatened to explode the parliament by explosion Exploding. But he was arrested and subsequently executed for treason. So the day is celebrated a guy of the very people have fireworks. Then there is a used to be <coughs> poppy day, which was for collecting money from visitors and tourists to Cambridge by, by to performing various pranks and games. And you see examples of this here. Now here you see a particular club in action. It is a roof climbing club. 
you may worry about the group planning. It is the idea was that club members would climb old buildings in Chimbri from outside. They will not use any rope or any other instrument. Simply their hands, and they had to go go right to the top. <coughs> it requires lot of problem and lot of exercise, but there are books written on how to climb buildings in Cambridge. You will be surprised. That people do this climbing. What was the what were the proctors or the police were doing? Well, after midnight, proctors would not be there, but police would be walking. But they, the roof climbers, had to learn how to hide from police while walking. It was all part of the game. Now here you see one interesting thing. Austin Seven car, the proper car man was first on top of Cambridge University Senate House in the morning when people came out. They saw this. This, uh, this particular car on the roof of the house. So they wonder how this got there. So of course the proctors got into the game and they announced to the students to come and confess. But those students who had made the car go up, they did not come out. So proctors called the fire brigade. Please bring this car down. Fire brigade tried to do that, but they said, "No, sorry, we can't do it. We don't know how it got there." So the proctor had declared an amnesty. They said, "Those who need to put it up there, please, please come and put it down. We will not charge you any punishment." Mm -hmm. Then they came and put it up. So this kind of thing can happen, but there are serious societies like the mathematical society, Archimedean, Pythagorean, Quintic, and there is also a graduate student club which is called Bell Square Week Club, which was also huge. We can do. The research tool. Now here you see some of the research tools found, and you see here John Faulkner, Peter Schmidt. Then you have Vera Arce, the embodied person. You can see me also with lot of hair on me, on my head, so you can't recognize me. And Kumar Chitra also in a similar state. In Kengli, in the early days, Yogi was not took upon as a very desirable degree. People said that if your research is good enough, you will be well known. You don't need a PhD level for. It. But uh, there were other celebrated uh, prizes for graduate students. Here you see the Smith Prize. Some previous recipients of this Smith Prize was Thompson, that is Lord Kelvin, Maxwell, that is James Clark Maxwell, Hardy, that is G. H. Hardy. Little Wood, who worked also with Hardy and Ramanuja, James G. Eddington, Mill, Bertie, Boyd, 
they were all members of they were all winners of this prestigious Nobel Prize, which, which was won by them when they they had just completed two years of their degree. That is, they are still halfway in towards PhD. I would like to tell you one amusing incident. I had been an applicant for Smith's Prize. I had submitted an essay for this prize, and it was held with other essays examined by all the senior professors of mathematics department. Now, in that this. My my own supervisor, PhD supervisor, was Fred Orrin Walter. And one day, I was going around to the oil house for some work. When Mrs. Hoy caught me and said. You know, we have this cat called Tatty. I say yes. What about her? So this Tatty is is very choosy. He's according to he says what he always chooses the best place to sit on. And then she said she was sitting on your desk. So this was giving me a hint. That when the result is out, and my result, I will have got the prize. So this is what happened. Actually. So without telling it explicitly, I tried to give me a hint. The Cambridge John nowadays, the fellow of a college, he has the privilege of a fellow and. There are honorary fellows. So now we come to the last part. What is the present standing of Cambridge? So I can tell you one information. <coughs> the University of Cambridge was named number one university in the world in the. Two thousand one zero U.S. World University Ranking, published on eight September two thousand and ten. Two thousand and ten. It was voted the best for research quality by fifteen thousand academics around the world, and also sixty one sixty one of its graduates. Eighty-eight of its affiliates, that is, people who work there, got Nobel Prize. This is the kind of achievement that Henry has done, and therefore, it's a privilege to be a member of the Fellows. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks a lot, Janet, for this really fascinating talk and this journey through the history of Cambridge. Uh, I understand that uh, you have kindly agreed to take a few questions. So, if uh, people have some questions, I would ask them to please raise their Zoom hand, and I can then uh, unmute you, and you can ask. Uh, Professor Vikramasinghe, I think you are muted. So, shall I unmute you? Can you just give me a second? No, I just want to say that it's a fantastic talk, and it 
brought back mem memories of a long, long time ago when Jean and I were together in Cambridge and our wives were also there. Uh, and, uh, the, and, and the punting that he referred to, uh, we were all involved in doing that on a regular basis, uh, a sort of Sunday, Saturday pastime. And um, I think on one occasion, we, we uh, punted right up to Grantchester, where John uh, showed the, um, the orchard, where the, uh, the famous orchard where we used to have tea and so on. So these are great times and great memories that he brought down brought back to us and it is a really superb uh, history of the University of Cambridge from its inception to uh, to the present day. I think it still ranks extremely highly in, in the world rankings. Um, and so, so that's it and uh, yeah, it's, it's a superb lecture. Thank you. Thanks, Professor Vikram Singh. So we have a couple of questions. Uh, on there's a question from YouTube, uh, which I think is uh, is is quite uh, nice, and it will be good to hear Jayant's views on this. So the question is, what is your advice for young students in India who would like to pursue astrophysics as a career at Cambridge? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, uh, I would say that Cambridge has a very good institution for studying astrophysics called the Institute of Astronomy. Earlier, Fred Hoyle had established what he called the Institute of Theoretical Astronomy. Later on, that institution was expanded to include observational component also. So it was called Institute of Astronomy. That uh, has the, what you call the nucleus of Cambridge research in Australia. And many students should be found there studying or working on various interesting aspects of astronomy. Thanks. So there is one more question. Uh, Nir Kalita asks, what was the most important moment of your Cambridge life? <laughs> well, it is very difficult to identify one particular moment, but I can say that uh, when I was given what you call the Yeah, award for doing best in the Tripod examination for astronomy. That particular award. Okay, yes. It is called the Tyson Medal. And that Tyson Medal is given to the best performer in astronomy. And if, if there is no good enough performer, it's not given. So, uh, this Tyson medal was given to me after many years. It was not given. And several years previously, my father had won that same medal when he was in school. So, this is probably a rare event, which is that. Why I Thanks, Jan. That's really, really fascinating. I don't see any other questions. Uh, and I think that's also a very nice note to end on. So uh, please join me in thanking Jan uh, over Zoom. I am unmuted, so I can clap for everyone. Everyone can give their Zoom claps. And uh, thanks, Jant, and uh, thank wish you all the best. Yeah. And thank you very much. It's a fantastic talk. Okay, thanks, everyone. We'll close the session now.